Hello friends, happy Thursday. Yes, Thursday. <laughs> Hope you guys are having a great day so far. Let's get to it. Um, tomorrow will be the last day that we go through this book, which is the Christ-centered exposition, Exalting Jesus in the book of Proverbs. Um, and it is a commentary that we've been going through. Um, it's been great. It's been so helpful. Um, but we are going to stop it tomorrow just because I feel like I want to try something else with you guys. Um, kind of change it up a bit. For those of you who have bought the book, continue reading, continue diving in because it's been a blessing. Um, so this was kind of just like a little starter to kind of get you going. Um, in it but it's been going so deep and we've been seeing uh jesus in this book in the book of proverbs which is it is odd i've read the book several times and um, i know that jesus is the main hero in the whole you know bible from genesis all the way to revelation but it's been so curious to see how it is that he is shown in each book and in this book his name is not you know uh written out like jesus but his character and his idea an idea who he is is all over it we found out that wisdom has a name and wisdom is jesus all right and we're not really going to understand wisdom if, unless we are walking with him once we're walking with him he's going to show us how to apply even all these tips and advices that we see in the book of proverbs that was written by solomon all right he was a king um in israel um and he was one of the one of the, the the kings and he was very very wise very wise so he wrote this book for his son um but we see that what he's describing here is wisdom is actually jesus himself all right so that's amazing so we were going through chapter two and we started in verses 1 through 11 earlier in the week and then we went through verses 12 through 22 and that's what we're continuing to go through even today okay um and we talked about yesterday how um verses 12 to 22 wisdom is warning us about you know with uh or against two people evil men and evil women and we talked about how evil men are the ones who really sugarcoat really um try to make sin uh, seem like it's not sin and um, even just deviate the truth just a little bit so we can, uh, yeah, so we so it actually is sin um, and uh, they use perverse speech to really twist the way that we think to really think that sin is not sin at all and that we're allowed to do this but in all reality if anything it doesn't matter if it comes from a loving heart or someone you love or somebody you trust if it goes against the bible or if it's off by one degree from what the bible is saying then it's not true and if it's not true it's sin and we talked about how that path of evil um leads to death all right um and then finishing off we talk about how wisdom will deliver you from these people from these evil men all right um and again the path where they're leading you is the path to, of death so today we're going to talk about the evil woman because yesterday we talked about the evil man so today we're talking about the evil women um and we are introduced to these this evil woman what they call here woman folly which she is mentioned so many times in the scripture i mean in the proverbs in this proverbs um that and right now we're getting an introduction to who she is so i'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself let me go ahead and just read it says wisdom will also save you from the forbidden or foreign woman all right who is a smooth tongued all right this is the first time we meet the foreign woman in proverbs she will be a major character in this book she is the subject of the father's warning many times, all right? She's clearly presented as Solomon's competitor for his son's affection and attention because her flattering tongue or flattering talk rival uh, rival his words. They go against what Solomon is trying to teach his son and the Lord's words. Her flirtatious words mimic the dad in order to get the son to listen who will listen who he will listen to so again this is just an introduction to this woman that goes uh whatever she's teaching goes against what solomon is telling him to do but the way that she's doing it, it's very flattering it's very nice very loving so that is what she uses to get his son to follow her instead of what um, he should be doing which is following his um, his father's advice or Solomon's advice and going against Solomon's advice pretty much is going against God's advice okay uh, because God and Jesus is wisdom 
Here, in this passage that we read, she refers to a literal person with whom the son can commit sexual sin. And that starts, here we go, in verse 16. Verse 16 of chapter 2, it says, So you will be delivered from the forbidden woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words, who forsake the companion of her youth. Meaning, she's already married. This girl is already married. And she's going after his son, all right? And forgets the covenant of her God. Meaning she's a, uh, a Christian, but not really. Like she's a, a Jewish, you know, uh, person. She goes to temple. She makes sacrifices, which nowadays could be somebody who's a Christian who or claims to be a Christian. Someone who's in the church. Someone who uses the things of God to manipulate, all right? This is hardcore. This is not somebody who's just out and about in the world and then you stumble across her. No, those women you know are not right. Those are not are evil or not from the Lord. But it's different here because um, we're shown out in a way that we this can happen from with women inside the church. And this is so scary and this is so bad. Um, but it's true. It says, in her house, she sings down to death and her paths to, to the departed. None who go to her come back, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you will walk in the way of the good and keep to the path of the righteousness. All right, and it continued, continues on there. But this is the woman that we're talking about, okay? And me hearing this, all right, like because you're saying, okay, so this is for guys so that they can avoid this woman. But hello, this is for women too. This is for us to avoid those evil men who do the same thing, you know, in the church who pretend to be Christians, but it, honestly, in their lives, there is no fruit. They don't follow God's commandments. And they could be nice, they could be, you know, appropriate, but if they do not follow what the Word of God teaches and they don't live their life according to what the Word of God says, then they are folly men as well. This teaches me also, um, and I'm getting kind of real, this teaches me um, to watch the way that I act with other men, to watch the way that um, I flirt and make sure that I don't challenging me, okay, as a woman, um, because I am married and I am in the church and I love God, you know what I'm saying, um, to live a life that is pure in front of God's eyes, that I do not become this woman. And if I am not close to God, if I am not seeking Him daily and being real with my relationship with Jesus, guess what? I am one dumb mistake away from being this woman because honestly, it could happen to anybody. That's why we need to live in the scriptures, okay? So here, like I said, she refers to a, he refers to a literal person with whom the son can commit sexual sin. But later, she will be personified as woman folly, the rival to woman wisdom, okay? Folly will be described in the same way as this woman. They're both flatters, who lure their prey to death. So with flattery, with like, you know, joking around, silly, you know, uh, gracious talks, they can lead their victims to death, all right? Um, if the son begins an affair with this forbidden woman, it will reveal that he has rejected his father, wisdom and the Lord. So if he enters into this relationship or one of us enter into this relationship or we have become this woman, all right, we have rejected wisdom, which means we have rejected Jesus, the father um, and, uh, and the Lord himself. Embracing the human uh, forbidden woman by means, oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, embracing the human forbidden woman by, by means of sexual sin reveals the spiritually he is in a relationship with woman folly instead of wisdom. So if he uh, enters into this relationship, it already means that he is avoiding or rejecting wisdom, uh, the um, woman wisdom that we're supposed to be um, targeting to, okay? This is not a shocking, this is not shocking since sexual sin and spiritual sin are are tied together through the Bible. Already in Proverbs 132, rejecting wisdom is describing with the same word as unfaithful to the Lord in the prophets, all right? Adultery is a distortion of the most intimate human relationship. And 1 Corinthians 6 reveals that it is also a distortion of the most intimate spiritual relationship, which is the relationship between a man and a woman, okay? I remember growing up and um, it's just so true. Like everywhere I went, you know, as a youth in the church, 
um, they would describe sex as something like you need to stay away from it. This is not something good. Avoid it. Flee from it. You know what I'm saying? Um, it it was almost even described as something that was just so bad that we only did it when we got married. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's not you know that's not a proper way of describing it. Like yes, we have to avoid sexual um, sin and and uh, and anything that has to do with that. Um, but we forget that this is so pure. Like this is something that God created for a man and a woman, um, limited to the marriage bed. Okay, um, and this is something that we can rejoice in and we can um, really enjoy it in those parameters and in those limitations, right? Um, but I feel like we are just all the time bombarded by bombarded by that, and we don't really say, "Hey, this is something beautiful." But you will not even appreciate it to its fullest if you don't wait until you find that person that God has for you. You marry, you into, into, enter into a covenant relationship for a lifetime and then you can enjoy it and you can have fun with your partner. And this is something that God created. But we distort it when we take it out of marriage. And that is what sexual sin is. It's like a spiritual um, violation because it is not what God intended. And the spiritual connection between me and my husband is supposed to mirror the relationship between Jesus as husband and us, his body, as his bride. So it is so deep and it's so important for us to just cling to Jesus so we don't fall into this sexual um, um, temptation, okay? Let's see, continuing on. The whole point of Proverbs 1 through 9 is that if... Our horizontal relationships are off, meaning my relationship with my brothers and sisters, all right? Our vertical relationship um, are wrong as well, all right? So my if my relationship with my brothers and sisters is off, it's probably because my relationship with God is off. That comes first. I need to make sure my relationship, vertical relationship is where it's supposed to be. And then my my relationships, horizontal relationship with my, with my brothers and sisters will be restored. Um, let's see what else. Solomon knows this full and well because he fell for forbidden foreign women who led him to idolatry and destroyed his dynasty. Falling from the forbidden woman will reveal that the son is being led away from the Lord or wisdom and is instead embracing folly. Now, this is something that he's warning his son about. Solomon is warning his son about because it happened to him. Um, I remember growing up and like learning that like Solomon, yes, he was the wisest man in the world and he had like all these riches, but then he had like so many wives and concubines. I don't even know what a concubine is. I just know he had hundreds of them. Like, I don't know, girlfriends, mistresses, but uh, like everybody knew. Um, but he had like hundreds of wives. Like, what is that? So that is something he fell into because the Bible is clear the marriage is between one man and one woman. And he had so many wives and so many concubines. So he is literally um, warning his son about it. And his relationships with his concubines actually what destroyed his dynasty and his um, his kingdom. Because he had so many wives that he had acquired from different religions and he had to make them happy so he would create temples for for them to worship their gods you know um and i don't know if maybe he would go with them to these temples like it's that big of a deal you're entering into a spiritual connection with somebody who worships other gods so he's warning him about a uh, woman folly the adulterous woman the foreign woman because he fell for it all right um so that's about it about it for today Tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow we will finish up this chapter and finish talking about, you know, woman folly and the adulterous woman and the conclusion. And again, like ladies are listening to this, like we hear this and we're like, oh, that's not for me, you know, I'm adulterous woman. But let's read into this and let's see different ways that we can sometimes act like that. And he'll go into detail about that later. Like, Talking to men, how we are supposed to treat our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, um, having conversations. And for example, like with my husband, I try for him to know when I'm having conversations with people, with other men that are not him or that it's not my dad or my brothers, um, he knows about it. He needs to know about it. Hey, listen, by the way, yeah, I talked to this guy and blah, 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 blah. Um, and sometimes if it's if it's somebody that uh, I'm not sure about um, and I have to send them a text or something, I make sure I include my husband into it so he's aware. Um, or I let them know, hey, listen, read my text. Or, hey, this is what happened. Um, 
I try, I try to do that. Not just to say, oh, I'm perfect. No, but to watch myself too and to watch my heart and to watch my intentions. Um, because just like we see there that the woman, the adulterous woman, got to his son through flattery and through talking, that's how things start. And we need to be very careful in how you know, we as women treat other men and other our brothers and sisters, our brothers in Christ, and how our brothers in Christ treat their sisters in Christ. Um, but we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Anyways, so that's about it for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you who have, um, don't forget to accept prayer requests. So let me know if you're going to add you to, our, to my prayer list or a prayer list that we have that we pray for every time that we pray with as our family. We come together. And that's about it. So have an amazing Thursday, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.